Yo, yo, what's up guys? So in this video, I interview a childhood friend of mine. His name is Willie Smith. Um, he is in the process of, well, he's already created his brand, but he's building his brand, right? And this is some uh, really amazing stuff. If you guys enjoy interviews like this, okay, if you guys enjoy me interviewing people on my channel, please comment down below. Give this video a freaking thumbs up. Smash it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell and enjoy, guys. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, guys? Um, I got a, a special friend here of mine, right? His name is uh, Willie Smith. Uh, childhood friend, I want to say. All right. Willie from Willie Nilly Knits. What's up, man? What's going on? What's happening with you, man? Good morning to you. I know it's a little early on the West Coast, but I do appreciate you making the time. Um, this has been a long time coming, Destiny. So I'm very yeah. excited. Thanks again for having me on. <laughs> nah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, it's a special one right here for sure. Um, Willie, uh, my audience, of course, um, we, we're all about like uh, print on demand and stuff like that um shirt 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 you know i talk a lot about a shirt like shirt content shirt designs and stuff like that um but you were a little bit a little bit of a different uh kind of different kind of like in the same category different approach to this um but let's uh let's get straight into your story let's get straight into your story and uh, give us a little bit of background about you okay for sure man just like uh rj said you know what i mean uh we came from the same place Vanny, california you know what i'm saying uh South of the tracks, you know what I'm saying? On the other side of the tracks, down on Hargrave, holla at it, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it was just crazy because I was between like eight and 10 years old and uh, met this man. And I had to basically cross a park and then cross a field to get to like his neighborhood where it is, you know what I'm saying? And that field ain't there no more. It's like a whole bunch of housing developments and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Lived with his grandma, grandpa. They had a goat in the backyard. <laughs> super friendly people yeah i didn't forget that i, I definitely yeah, there go. That. Okay. um super friendly folks <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, goat, it huh? actually inspired you know what i'm saying the willy dilly you see you see the goat you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. we really out here <laughs> um love me some goats but uh very uh special very friendly uh people very friendly family took me in no question you know what i mean i spent that night at his house a couple times and this was unheard of back then, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was uh, just very something, something super duper special. And like, I always appreciated that and just really proud of like, you know, the man RJ became and still becoming and doing all this stuff on YouTube and everything actually inspired me. I was like, my man out here doing it. He actually re yeah. reached out to me a couple times and uh, was all like, hey man, so what's up? Like, I see you doing the print on the man, you doing, you doing merch, you doing this and that and trying to get that stuff there. So like, I'm very excited for what can come up with that, but um, mm -hmm. I'm just glad. It's just crazy how the world works and how small the world is, how the people who you started with will come all the way around, do all kinds of crazy stuff, and then come back out of nowhere doing mm -hmm. the same things and just meet up in uh, such a such a bigger way, such a synergistic way. So I'm very excited and uh, grateful for uh, all the things that we've done to get back to this point. Yeah, no, man. That's a... Uh... It's crazy because you see my uh, – we talk about it and I posted it up on Facebook and you can see my grandpa. He used to comment right in there, right, because he already knew. Like he left the comment of love and he's um, he's actually one of my biggest supporters when it comes to any of this stuff when I've been making content for online, uh, helping people make money online, stuff like that. He's been a big supporter of that. So anything that I do related to business or anything like that and then he's seen you and he was like, all right, okay. And he just left the – you know, always showing love. So <laughs> – um, that, then that's, that's, it's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool because it's, uh, it's, you know, he's like an inspiration. I look up to him. So personally myself, so, um, uh, yeah, no, I'm surprised, you know, about the goats and I remember the, the field crossing the park and all that stuff. And that's, that's, that's actually, if you guys don't know about that, I'm a big fan of like, you know, just growing up and stuff and respecting everything that you've done in life and stuff like this. You personally, all right. Now I know there's some accomplishments like you growing up. Um, I know in high school, we really didn't like we connected a little bit, but not too much. But because you're out there doing your thing, man, and of course, you're a little bit older than me, so we're a different, uh, different age group, of course. And uh, me coming up, I think my freshman year, I think you were like a, a senior already or something like that. So you're doing your thing, you're accomplishing a lot of stuff. Um, and of course, we'll get willy nilly still, we'll get into that right now, and it's we'll get into that too. But I know that you, you first of all, you're you were like one of the fastest people in the county. Okay, let's not forget about that. Let's not forget about that. 
He was fast. You yeah. Know, we'll get into that yeah. too. And then your accomplishments, I, like all the accomplishments you accomplished in school and stuff like that. Let's not forget about that. Let's let's hit that. And then we'll, of course, we'll get into more of the other stuff too. But talk about that a little bit, man. That's freaking, it's amazing, man. Because I used to look up to you, man. I would look up to you. I was like a fan of yours. And I was like, man, my guy about to smoke everybody in this track and field event today. <laughs> or just in football too. That's my boy right there. <laughs> Yes, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we just, we small town. We were just all about just our community and just bigging up our own people and just supporting our own people. And like, you know what I mean? I came from very humble beginnings. You know what I'm saying? I was in the hood most of my life. I was on one side of A Street pretty much all my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, From those of you who, who are from Bannon, you know what I'm saying? And like school was everything to me. You know what I mean? Like I would literally be at school for as long as I could. So because I knew there wasn't much going back home. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to my family. They did everything they could. But I knew school was my way out the hood. School was my, my way out of poverty. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as I could stay there and the teachers would invest in me, coaches would invest in me, I was about that life. You know what I mean? And I knew I was, I, I was able to be able to get an opportunity from, from all of that. You know what I mean? So, like, um, academics w- was the way to get out. You know what I mean? Like, get colleges to see you and stuff like that. But they didn't just want somebody that could just like run a ball or like run fast. You have, you, know, you had to have like a, a good GPA. I mean, the last time I looked at it, it was probably like uh, when I was a senior, I was like 12th in the 12th uh, out of like however many seniors there was in the class graduating. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was, I was up there, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. doing all those sports and everything, football, basketball, track. I swam my last two years of high school. You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. trying to squeeze tennis in there a little bit. You know what I mean? Whatever I could do, basically just to not. Be at the house, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. wasn't really going nothing going on at the house, and I was about like engaging and being with the community. So I was definitely mm-hmm. doing all of those. Um, I was in. Um, I started off varsity track, uh, from ninth all the way to twelfth grade. You know what I mean? One mm-hmm. of the fastest folks in the county, like RJ said. You know, real big accomplishment. Just trying to train and and do all of that. You know, did Olympic weightlifting, zero period, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, varsity football and in sophomore year, all the way up to senior year. You know what I mean? Uh, me and my man David Mitchell, shout out to my man David Mitchell. Um, mm-hmm. in the backfield we was doing our thing. Uh, good mm-hmm. time. Made it yeah. to the All Stars. Um, but we got kind of, kind of, kind of screwed over with that whole uh, deal. But you know, we were just trying to make it. Uh, basketball. You know, I just definitely played basketball to stay in shape and just to be with the rest of my boys. You know, you remember Jarrell? You remember Darius? Mm-hmm. You remember yeah. Marvin? You know what I'm saying? We was a Fab Five out there. You know, mm-hmm. it was just, uh, just, just fun and just, and just love just being around all those folks. So that was a football, basketball track, um, mm-hmm. weightlifting, you know what I'm saying? Just, just trying to stay in shape just trying to get seen and, and stuff like that. Just to show people on paper that I was, uh, you know, what they call the scholar athlete. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he can get grades and he can, he's not just like a jock and all of that kind of stuff. But like, you know, a lot of good accomplishments, you know, just really uh, very, in, very uh, inspired and, and humbled all the people that they uh invested in me and, and did all that work for me and so i was just making sure that, you know what i'm saying i carried all of those folks on my back so like mm-hmm. when i got to college you know what i'm saying i had to make sure i graduated so i got had to go out and, and, and do all of that but shout out to all them yeah no that's cool because then you kind of like this is a perfect segue into willy willy nilly knits mm-hmm. because it's like you know you understand like the dedication you understand the hard work you know it's not easy and uh, I, like you said, right now you're like, dude, I've been up since three a.m. <clears throat> three a.m. waiting for this. I'm like, what? <laughs> Popping, baby. I'm out here knitting. I got, I got the knit with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I was killing yeah. it. You know yeah, saying? no. So, so yeah, um, yeah, man. So that's that's really cool, and um, I respect it. I love that a lot because it was just like, dude, he's like on a whole different level. He's doing everything and still like still getting it done. So. Good job on that, man, for sure. Like, I know there's like, there's like no, like really no compliment. You know, you know how it is too. You get all the compliments, right? You've been like, so you accomplished all this stuff. You get all these compliments. And uh, we, we kind of talk about like Gary Vee before uh, last week we were on a little call. We're like, you can't, you can take it to compliments and then you can, there's the negativity, there's the compliments. And I treat both of them the same. Like, I really don't, I see it. I'm like, thank you, of course. But then can't pay too much attention to it because then you let it get to your head and then uh, yeah, you can't let that happen to you. So how'd you willy nilly knits? How'd you, what I would have never even <laughs> like thought about you like 
knitting and stuff. And if I if I say say, say anything wrong, this uh, correct me, of course. But like when it comes to knitting and all that stuff, I would <laughs> never even think that you would do something like that. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to figure out like what Bro, what got you into? Yeah. What you got? What 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 started that? Go ahead. Oh man, my goodness! Like I mean, you're right. So just go ahead and start back from the beginning. 2008, 2007, right? Uh, college. Um, I'm in like a gender studies class or something like that, and I'm just kicking it. Um, in there, you know what I mean? Straight hooded up, you know what I'm saying? Like just looking like a thug. Like I can't believe I see pictures now. I'm just like, who in the world was that? Lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this girl. She's got this scarf and she's killing it. You know what I'm saying? She on like some straight needles and she just da 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 da, -da. and like she had like this purple scarf and it had like a, a skull crossbones in it. And I mm -hmm. was like, bro. How do I do that? I need to know how to do that right there. I don't know what yeah. it is, but that's amazing. I was just always intrigued about people who can like make clothes and make stuff with their hands, you know, real skills and trades and stuff like that. So I bugged this this girl for weeks. I swear mm -hmm. she thought I was trying to sleep with her. I swear she thought I was. I swear. <laughs> but I was like, bro, I, I, I mean, every day on the day, I stayed until she left and everything. And like, she finally... Uh, was like, okay, I guess you, you're not trying to, like, sleep with me. Three weeks, like, you're, just, like, I'm going to show you, and you're going to leave me alone. I mm. said, bet, cool, let's go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she stayed in the all-girl dorm, you know what I'm saying? So mm. I got, like, the whole profile, frisked down, got my face, fingerprints, mm. they were really on me. Got in there, you know what I'm saying, after she told me to go to Joanne's, one of the favorite, my favorite stories, just go in there just because, go in there, mm. get, um, some yarn and a couple of needles and i came back i was like all right let's run show me something she showed me how to do just some of the basic stuff the knits the pearls um stuff like that and i swear i swear the whole rest of that summer yeah. i was in the house hot jeans with yarn <laughs> i'm just sweating trying to just figure this out i made scarves i made hats i made all types of stuff and just really trying to get into it so i was just off and on just trying to do stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Because I was always a big fan of the handmaids. I was like, mm. yo, like, think about, like, you can buy anything for your mama, but if you made something for moms, bruh, it's pricey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, just doing stuff like that. And then it came fast forward to, like, 2019. I'm making stuff, and, like, people are like, man, this is really good. How much How much does this cost? And I said, I should start selling this. I should really <laughs> get serious and make this happen. Because people yeah. actually want it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just like uh, Gary V said, the market will tell you if you're good. The market yeah. will tell you if your stuff is good enough to be exchanged, valuable enough to be exchanged for actual money. And mm -hmm. that was my, that was the click. It clicked in me. 2019, August 9th, uh, October 19th. Never forget it. So um, yeah. I started doing that, getting on Instagram. That was the day I got on Instagram. I started getting all these accounts and everything like that. Started taking orders and, and just getting on videos and everything. And, like, it just started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, like, I'm working jobs and I'm seeing, like, you know what I'm saying, these other people who are, like, free and, like, able to kick it with their kids and able to go wherever they want to go. And not really talking about the business aspect, but we know the business afforded that type of stuff for them. And I understood yeah. that. And I was like, yo, let's go ahead and get started. You know what I'm saying? They say five to seven years to build the business. I said, okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and start now. By the time my little boy is, like, 19 years old, I should be out. I do everything like this, should be out. Be good. 2025. Yeah. That's the day. Mm -hmm. And then just like that, you know what I'm saying? A bunch of collaborations and talking with people and networking and learning along the way. Willy Nilly Nits was born, baby. And we out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um yeah. it's it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. No, that's awesome, man. That's uh that's pretty cool because it's I know that uh a lot of people struggle with certain things like this, and I think this this is a really awesome like interview and conversation to have especially with someone like you and then like i told you man i told you too as well like like and we're gonna refer back to this guys a few times but it just you know something that we that connection that we have had and there's like they can't no one can take that from us right so to know someone not at all personally that is actually making it happen and doing whatever it takes to get it done is that's i i feel i'm like dude no one understands me. I was like, but in a way, I feel like you understand me because I'm just like, this is hard. This is hard. This is hard. But it's not. It's like it, that's what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's not supposed to be easy. Yes, so, sir. I uh, totally get it. 
it's not supposed know. to be easy because nobody else, nobody, everybody else will be doing it. Like, there's a reason why, like, nobody's messing with this or like people who fail spread that, like, that, that failure story around. And it's like, all right, well, I'm not even messing with that at all. You know what I'm saying? Why yeah. have you taught ramen for like three weeks? Been there. Uh, they don't want to mess with that. Like, or oh, I had to mess up my credit cards and this and that. Been there. Um, <laughs> still there. Um, <laughs> had to do all that kind of stuff. So, like, I... of course, like, nobody wants to feel that kind of pain. I'll be yeah, real no, with it, you know what I'm saying? I always uh-huh. said if I ever got like a platform or something like that, I was just gonna keep it real and be my authentic self, you know what I'm saying? They're not gonna see me from here, from like before I started and when like 2030, I ain't changing because that's the yeah. person that you bought into from the beginning. Like, why change? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I totally feel you. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So uh what what type mm-hmm. of products are uh, are you making? Like uh from what what are you what are you making right now at the moment? Like what type of products? Yes, sir. So we're talking about handmaids. Um, a lot of people like make a lot of other stuff, but I try to make sure I focus so I can become an expert in that field. So hats, um, mm-hmm. accessories. So we're talking like uh, headbands, cowls, you know, a lot of 360 stuff that goes mm-hmm. on the body, boot cuffs, socks, fingerless gloves, you know, like these little itty bitty accessories that just make all the outfits pop. And then baby garments, you know what I mean? The mm-hmm. one thing that they ha- all have in common is that they're smaller. And because they're smaller, the cost in making them is less. The time it mm-hmm. takes to make them is less, but the possibilities are still endless. So I could die. I got like tons of yarn in my, the biggest room in my house. I sleep in the biggest room in my house. That's where the craft room is at. I sleep in mm-hmm. the smallest room. Um, that's mm-hmm. how it works. So mm-hmm. um, I, I I could literally die and not make use all that yarn that I have in my house, but it's gonna do something for me. You know what I'm saying? So like those are the things that I make handmade primarily. I have made uh, toys. I've made uh, stuffed animals. I've made um, little cube things. Have you ever seen those on my Instagram? Mm-hmm. Um, I've made uh, turtleneck capelet sweaters for people. Basically, you know what I'm saying? If it's got a pattern and you're willing to pay for it, your boy got you. I'm going to take care <laughs> of that. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep you involved every step of the way. So. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm seeing it too, man. That's, and then we'll, of course, yeah, right. we'll get into that a little bit in a little bit. But that um, you were, you had a hat right there that you were doing right there in the car. The it was like a green. You said you was no, no, yes, no. The, yes, sir. This one right here, like uh, that one right, right there. Who is that? Is that for a special someone? Yeah, it's actually for uh, for a customer. It was somebody uh, that that we grew up with in Bennett. It's, it's for a little kid. Uh, remember, uh-huh. I don't know if you remember Jacqueline Renteria. I remember the I remember the name. I think I do. Yes. So she's got a son, and she was like, "Yeah, would you make something for me with banding colors? Got the black, green, and white in it. You know what I'm saying? My wife, she dyed the yarn. She made it this color. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. I put the black and stuff in it, and made it reversible and stuff like that. And I'm gifting another one to him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's getting cold. Got a bald head. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? It, the, the cold is not nice to people with uh, skin heads. So. Um, um, I'm taking care of that for them and, and everything like that. I, I mess around and be done with it, be ready to get washed and stuff uh, by the day, and we just be yeah. on to the next one. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's what I love about it. So how how long does one like one uh, product like a soul like the hat right there? How long does that take to make? It just depends. Um, mm-hmm. I couldn't really give people an actual time frame, so I usually mm-hmm. say a lot of the projects, especially if they're hats or something like that give me about a week, seven days um, or less, and I'll be able to take care of it because this is one of like six projects that I got going right now. Like yeah. I got sets and sets and sets of needles, just like got yarn on, got projects on them, and I'm doing all of that because like my philosophy is if I start five, I ain't got to like start one, finish one, and then start one, finish one. I can do all five, and when that's all done, I got five things. Five, mm-hmm. just like that. Mm-hmm. So it's an efficiency kind of deal. But if I was to sit there and like say, like, okay, this only one I got to work with, this only one I gotta get done, you got a week. I'd probably get this done in three days. Nice. No problem. Okay. Okay, man. That's cool, man. Yeah, so um, we're talking so, like working hours. Yes, sir. Uh no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You were saying something? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just saying, like, because, you know, a lot of people in the Native community, they, they talk about, like, working hours, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm mm-hmm. not working on it, like, 72 hours in a day, right? Say a mm-hmm. session breaks down to probably, like, two, maybe three hours, right? Yeah. Three days, that's probably, like, uh, two hours on, on the short end. So two times three, that's six hours, six working hours, start to finish, boom, out the way. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. No. So the next, so the next question I have for you, just so the yarn itself, right? You died. Yeah. You said you died that. Okay. I mean, you, you you're telling me some stuff right here that I'm just like, you know what? I gotta I gotta know about that. So the <laughs> the yarn. So that yeah. the, the yarn you dyed it. So what color was it before? How much is a, a a piece of yarn like like a what is that like by the roll or how do they, however they say it? Um, yeah. What does something, something like that cost? For sure. So um. If anybody's like a, like a yarn dyer or like a um, person that they're getting it wholesale, so they're not buying it retail. So the people that are going to like Michael's and Joanne's and Hobby Lobby and stuff like that, their stuff is uh, pretty generic and it touches a certain base. Everything that we do is high end. So we're talking like top of the line, um, super wash merino wool. Merino wool is a very soft wool. Um, it's not very itchy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Everything that comes to us when we get it from our supplier, it's white. It's uh white. It's uh, it has not been dyed, so pre dye So um, yeah, it, it wasn't me. It was my wife. My wife actually dyes the yarn. She's the one that does that. I ain't got no. I I actually pay her. You know, what I'm saying yeah, we're married. We share finances and everything like that. But when it comes to business, it's black and white, black mm -hmm. and white. You know, what I'm saying like oh, like I, I gotta dye this. I'm like yeah, here's some money. Go ahead and make that happen. You know, what I'm saying like That's I gotta tough. do it like That's that. Tough. Um, but usually yeah. Hey, it, it's, it's all love. It's all respect. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, when it comes to how it comes in, depending on like the type of fiber that it is, whether it's yeah. um, wool or silk or cashmere or a blend of some sort, the higher end stuff comes in smaller batches. So yeah. um, like a regular, you know, run of the mill, uh, like wool, depending on like the weight, it comes in like 100 grams. They, they, they usually mark them in 100 grams because 100 is the metric system. It's easier to calculate. So if you want to get a, a hundred grams, you can do ten of those, and that's a kilogram, right? Super yeah. easy. So that's just ten balls. That's just ten uh, skeins. They call them skeins. Um, so yeah. it's ten skeins of yarn. But like the higher end stuff, wool silk, hundred percent silk, hundred percent cashmere, fifty grams. You know what I'm saying? So like mm -hmm. when we talk about high end, just put some dollar amounts to that kind of stuff for cost. If you were to go and get like one ball of super wash merino wool, worsted weight, undyed. You know, wholesale, you're probably looking at higher life between like four and six bucks. That's just 400 yeah. grams. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, you get a kilogram of that, you can probably do that for like 50 bucks. So mm -hmm. comparing that to like the big box stores, like Joann's and stuff like that, and we usually get a lot of high-end stuff. So I say like a 50-50 wool silk that we would get, that's going to run us wholesale, I don't know, between like 15, 20 bucks. Because we're going to get a bunch mm -hmm. of them. That's how the split mm -hmm. is. That yeah. 100 grams, you could buy two, three pounds of yarn at a at a Joann's, and that you can make a bunch of sweaters, you can make a bunch of granny square blankets and stuff like that, because that place is geared towards grandmas who don't have a lot of money, who are on a budget, and they want to get as much value as they can. That's why they call them like value saver. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I can do something with a fraction of that fraction of that uh that amount for the same amount of money. You know what I mean? So if you are at a store and you see, okay, I can get a pound. I got eight bucks. I got eight dollars right now for some yarn. I'm about to make something for my grandbabies and some somebody, especially someone, somebody. I got eight dollars. I get there, so I can go to this high end boutique, this local yarn shop, and I can get uh maybe fifty grams of like something that was on sale because that's hardly ever happens for eight bucks, and you get like fifty grams. That's three and a half mm -hmm. ounces. All right. Yeah. Same amount of money you go to Joanne's, you can get a pound, which is Four and that four hundred and fifty four grams, you know, I mean, sixteen ounces for the same amount of money. What you gonna pick if you're looking for quantity? Come on now, <laughs> it's a no brainer. You know yeah. what I mean? So like that's why like in my business we go from design all the way to the end, and I want to know exactly what you do because there's a market out there that people want to design everything that they do, everything that they have on their head, they have a part of it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like that's the, that that's the uh, the niche that we're in. No, that's um that's uh that's pretty dope because it's just like uh. Of course, someone's always going to have that question. Like, so where are you getting your product from? How are you doing it and stuff? So like, uh, I know you're saying that that wool, that, that, that is it like a, it's a higher, higher end wool. It's, it's real soft. Yes. And yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so like, yeah, the, high, the higher right. end wools, it's about like, basically like the width of a human hair or like the, the hair width or how wide the fibers themselves are. They call it micron count. So that's just basically the distance across from end to end on like a piece of hair. So mm -hmm. the smaller the micron count, the finer it is. That's why silk is so dang expensive because it's smooth as all gets out. 
and it's got a super low micron count for a protein fiber, which is like comes mm-hmm. from an animal, right? So it comes mm-hmm. from the worm. So yeah. um, the ones that have like a really wide, high micro uh, micron count, like, like the, the 24s, the like 30 or something like that, mm-hmm. really high, it's usually like fuzzy and scratchy on a microscopic level. And that's what makes it itchy. Yeah. So okay. um, that's why, like, you know what I mean? Um, when we talk about people like wearing stuff on their heads, on their necks, on their faces, it's got to be smooth on their skin because they're going to be wearing it for a long time. It can't be all scratchy. So a low micron count, it's got to be able to be put in the, the washing machine so it can be uh, easy to wash and stuff like that. And these are the kind of things that the market that we go after know about already, but they don't have the time nor the skill or both to, to do those things. So they can come to me and be like, hey, I need this like this and this color. I'm like that. Mm-hmm. It's gonna cost you mm-hmm. this much. They like that, and we get that done. So, <laughs> so you so you're saying that you're you like after the first or first wash, like nothing will happen to it. You're good. You, this is gonna last you a lifetime. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly. Okay. If you treat it right, it'll definitely uh do that for you. You know what I mean? And me personally, like this hat right here, um, uh-huh. I could put it in the wash machine, but uh-huh. I got a leather tag on it with the rivet that I set myself, and I uh burned, I I, I heat stamp the the letters in there w and k yeah. the willy nilly knits i don't want to put this to the wash because it is metal and it's leather you know how leather yeah. do in the wash it don't like to get wet yeah. so i i would like uh this is a removable too so i could pop that off and i would hand wash it and just dry it out there if you wanted to put it in the washing machine i wouldn't recommend drying it you know what i mean yeah. like i even had some of my things dry clean you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like if it, it's if it's gonna be something that's high in because you gotta think about like your suits you ain't gonna mm-hmm. put your suit in the wash machine. You are gonna take it to the dry <laughs> clean, right? Because it, yeah. it costs money. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like, if we want to talk practicality, let's talk apples to apples here. If it's something mm-hmm. that costs a lot of money, that that means it has a lot of value. If it has a lot of value, it can't go in and be washed and be laundered in the same way all the other conventional low value, lower value stuff gets washed. So, like, yeah. it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, dude. I like, dude. I just wanted to. I wanted to get that in there because I know. I know you did your research. I, I, I know you ain't oh, done. I'm, I'm I will it. never. I will <laughs> never take you for granted. That's all I'm saying, basically. Because I know, I'm like, you know, he, he, like, <laughs> I think he had a few dreams about this research already. He knows the business in and out. He knows uh, about the knitting oh, yeah. and all that stuff. And I know you slept on. You're like, I don't even know if you slept on it. You probably, yeah, you dreamed about it. You probably sleeping. You're dreaming about it, thinking about it all day, figuring out everything the ins and outs of everything i know how you like i i know how you are like like this is i'm gonna learn this i'm gonna go in there with my heart i'm gonna figure this out and i'm gonna do the best i can do possibly and if i mess up i'm gonna do it again and if i mess up i'm gonna keep doing it again until i get it right (laughs) keep doing it that's right that's exactly right you know what i'm saying and that's why there's max out credit cards all over the place but that's okay try try again it's gonna be okay it's gonna be better <laughs> but you're absolutely right man i'm totally immersed i'm totally immersed in this like the amount of watch hours i have on youtube books that i have um people that i've talked to and stuff like that man it just literally shapes you and yeah i'm, I'm, I'm shaped for this now i'm literally going down this path yeah okay so um there is, are there different types of knitting like you said like patterns and stuff like that right is that a different type of knitting or what is that type? Yeah. Of, like, what is that? So, so what I'm doing right now is just called stockinette stitch. Like when you talk about types of knitting, you're talking about, I don't know if you're talking about stitches or just like types of like how to do it. So there's different yeah. ways of doing it. Um, We're in North America. We're in the United States of America, right? So they teach what is called the English style of knitting where you hold okay. the yarn in your right hand and you can be a thrower or you can be like a flicker where you have like the yarn, you're like flicking it, flicking it, right? Or you yeah. can put the yarn in your left hand and do it that way. And that's what they usually teach in Europe, which is called continental. So, um, and they also have like Scottish knitting where they have like a super long joint, like the long needle and they armpit. And they, da, 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 da. they got like mm-hmm. Portuguese knitting where they have like um, little hooks on their shirts and stuff like that. And they tension mm-hmm. the yarn. And they have the yarn coming down. Da, 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 da. They mm-hmm. do it like that. So there's a whole bunch of different styles of doing it um to to do it and i i just went with the one that i kind of like grew up into but like i learned the other ones too so like uh like doing english with one hand doing continental with the other hand you're able to do like the different patterns where you got the colors and everything like that you got like the little designs and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and you're hella efficient you can do Mm -hmm. both of them on one hand too but like imagine having like a black and a white and you gotta go black 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 Mm -hmm. drop it white white drop it 
black. But if you got black in one hand, you got white in the other hand. Da, 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 we popping, baby. Let's roll. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We rolling out here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, like, I had to learn that. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's crazy. So like, so we're different. So there's there's knitting, there's stitching, right? So the, the stitching, you got like a favorite yes. stitching that you like to do. What's what you got? What you got? Hey, I like the What's one your favorite stitch? Uh, that's mindless. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh -huh. my my favorite 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 would have to be mosaic knitting. So mosaic mm -hmm. knitting is super duper easy. It's two is two colors, and you do two rows at a time. So you're slipping some stitches that are a certain color and you're knitting some other stitches and you get really nice effects. So I really like that because it's quick and mm -hmm. um, you can get a lot of uh, designs and, and flair and art out of it, which mm -hmm. is awesome. And um, it, it looks like it's super complex, yeah. but it's not. Um, yeah. and, and I love that. Uh, I guess my close favorite would be cable. See, look, I got a hat in the car. How you know? How you like that? <laughs> um, but like we got the cables up in here, yeah. You see, like the little yeah. swirls and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, I mean that's clean. You know what I'm saying? Like I look like something out of a store, and, and it's like real, real extra. This is me, bro. I did Yo, an actual man. class when I was doing virtual knitting with somebody. You know what I'm saying? He was like, "Oh, I want to learn how to do cables." I was like, "Kick it with your boy. Give me, <laughs> give, give me thirty minutes. Give me thirty. I'll do it right along with you, just like the video. And we can stop, pause, and you can interact with me." I'm just trying to make things better from what I see, you know what I'm saying? Because I yeah. can fill that void. Yeah, that's what's up, man. A good, a good job, good work. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us too, as well. By the way, of course. Um, so I know that you you talked about you touched on Instagram a little bit, right? Um, yes. I know that I know a few people that struggle kind of like putting themselves out there, right? And that's kind of what yes. differentiates like differentiates yourself from everyone else, right? It separates you from the pack. And a lot of people like kind of yeah. still, it's like, it's, it's hard for them to understand that because it's like, they're putting themselves out there and they don't feel like confident enough to do that, you know, and that's totally fine guys. And by the way, I'm not trying to put anyone down. That's totally fine. That's normal. It's part of life, right? right? A lot of people right. are like that. Now yeah. you, on the other hand, you coming off, this is, <laughs> excuse me, you're coming off second nature, right? You're, you're talking about audio. So you're talking about Instagram, you're building your audience. Now, when it comes to like the branding, mm. I see you're doing a lot of videos and you're actually putting yourself on camera. Is that how, how are you building your audience? You yeah. want to kind of give it like a like an informative and like insight on that and how you're doing it, how you're putting yourself out there. And how do you feel about putting yourself out there to everyone and let them know like, hey, this is me, baby. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> we out here. That's right. <laughs> um, oh man, such a good, such a good question. Such a good question. So, um, just back to your point, you know, what I mean, like a lot, like you said, a lot of people don't like to put themselves out there. But here's my whole take about it. You know what I mean? You try, like everybody, like you have a goal, you have an end. Like, what's your end? My end is I want to build this business as big as I can build it, and possibly have like leverage in it, equity stake or whatever, get some royalties, sell it off. Gone. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. I build it up and it's the only thing I can just do what I want to do or I just keep it. But like my thing is for those people, I just have a question for those folks. Like if you're not willing to put yourself out there, are you not willing to be paid? Like, like how, like people aren't buying the, the hats. They're not buying this because they can do this. They can get other people to do this. They're buying you. They're mm -hmm. buying you. So who are you? So they, people don't have to worry about like stressing or like being like, Oh, well, who is this guy? Da, da, da. I'm on video. This is me. Every video is going to be the same person. So like um, the reason the way I'm building my audience is I'm trying to build a connection. I'm trying to invoke an emotion because that's what people exchange their like they align their values with it and they exchange valuable things like like um, for money with those things, because these this here, this is a tangible emotional thing. I can wear this. It was once string at one point, balled up in Norway. This is Norwegian yarn, so it looks so mm -hmm. good. But <laughs> it's it. That's what I'm saying, and that's what I'm trying to do, and let people know, like we out here, like that's gonna, that, like that's the tagline. You hear we out here, or you hear WNK, or something like that, or you see some very ecstatic black guy talking about knitting, got yarns and everything. Like you gonna see me. I'm building a persona. I'm building a brand, and that and people don't buy merchandise like they buy merchandise because of the brand 
It's mm-hmm. the brand. Like people don't buy Nike. If people didn't know what Nike was, they wouldn't buy Nikes. People mm-hmm. buy Nikes because of the brand. They buy Adidas because of the brand. We buy and people that represent that brand. They associate themselves with qualities of the brand. So when you mm-hmm. have stuff like this, and you can like have like the the logo on there or the logo on there, that lets you know, hey, this is who I am. This is what I stake value in. This is a part of me. I align myself with these things. So like yeah. um, the way I'm building my audience, I want people to know who I am and what I'm about, what I stand for, and let them know. I stand for what you stand for. I'm aligned with that. So, you know, I'm doing that. I definitely would encourage more people to get themselves out on camera um, mm-hmm. because that's that's where it's at. You know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of video. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not, not to be super long winded. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> no, nah, you're good. No, no, I, I'm a big fan of video too because you can connect with people easier. It's yes. uh, it's no fluff, no fake, none of that stuff. It just no, <laughs> no hiding behind no da- no hiding behind no damn email and uh, yeah, writing, you having an attitude, right. having a, a fake attitude at the same time and uh, <laughs> writing an email. I'm like, I don't even know if this guy was real or not writing this email. Most people that I know that write just do video email marketing. I'm just like, this guy. I don't know if this guy's real or not. I can't tell. So, video. Oh, I'm a big yeah. fan of because of the emotion and you can see if. A, person is really genuine about certain things right and you can tell right off the bat so what show what's your favorite uh face instagram you talk about instagram a lot what's your favorite social media platform to i want to say be on uh mark what marketing on uh what what's your what's your what's your social media which one my 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 favorite uh social media would have to be instagram i'm a big fan of that because there's just so many um different ways of communicating with people um, I love YouTube because um, it's, it's definitely strictly video and like all the stuff that goes with the, the algorithm and stuff like that. But I definitely say IG as of right now because, mm-hmm. you know, you can put on the stories. Facebook, you can do that, too, of course. Um, you can uh, interact with folks. You can uh, put links down and, you know, link trees and and uh, flow pages and stuff like that. And you just give the audience a lot more ways to access content or anything that's associated with you or anything that's attached to you so i really love yeah. that um about um ig and uh there's a lot of people on ig and there's a lot of people like we were talking about that don't like to really put themselves out there but the, anybody can snap a photo people putting mm-hmm. pictures up all the time people putting stories yeah. up you know what i'm saying and getting real creative with the stories to really try to create some kind of effect and i definitely want to be a part of that i'm see for sure youtube has a ton of knitters on there you know what i mean they're looking for videos and everything that's why i started to put more uh instructional videos on there and uh um, yeah. those those kinds of things but like as of right now i use number one uh okay. then facebook then youtube okay how about um what about uh are you on tiktok i am not i don't know enough about it um i'd love to be on it um i just know it takes a lot of like sit down stuff like that you know i'm still grinding still yeah. working to save up like a computer last one like just like went kaput on me and stuff like that so a lot of this content that i do is really for my phone um yeah. we're on my phone right now um yeah. so just doing all of that but uh tiktok is popping i just don't know enough about it to really put myself out there and um it's all about time at the end of the day too like if i had somebody maybe even you right that uh help <laughs> me out and be like hey man do this on tiktok show you i did it and like you know all that time to research and do all of that when i could use that same time and I can post like three videos, two stories on Instagram. I can put that mm-hmm. same video on Facebook and um, YouTube and definitely like throw my visibility out there. Um, mm-hmm. It's not saying that the investment is not there and it's not mm-hmm. worth it. It's just that when we're talking about like monetary gain and, and mm-hmm. financial reasons and really like marketing, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I would be like three videos, two stories times three less mm-hmm while investing in that, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, with the season going on Christmas and stuff like that, it's time to capitalize, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, hundred percent. I, I see exactly what you're saying. Um, so a little insight on TikTok. TikTok is uh it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool place to post videos. Um, I've been testing it, messing with it. Uh, like the first week I got over a thousand followers just by posting videos. Uh, and I'm just like, the reach is amazing. It's really? like, they're not, they're not holding you back, man, over there. So <laughs> it's uh, and then also too, it's a different, different atmosphere. It's I feel like people like 
There's a lot of love on there, and I love it. That's what I love about it the most. You got you got old people. Come on, man. You, oh, got, yeah? you got people okay. in their 60s dancing over there to 90s and 80s hip-hop and R&B. I'm like, man, come <laughs> I've on. I've seen that. You're right. You're <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it don't get any better than that. So, um, yes, yeah, man. No, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beast over there. It's pretty cool. It's really awesome. Um, yeah, no. So, kind of wrapping it up right here. Uh, what is um, – how can someone learn how to knit? Like, what? Where they, where can they find like? <laughs> well, you can go to a lot of places. You know what I'm saying? Uh, obviously, since you're talking to me, I'm definitely gonna put my myself up there first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? I do offer um virtual knitting classes of uh, on whatever like platform that you want to do it on. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you just um I can throw the flyer to you if you want to have that. Um, basically, you pay like what twenty five bucks for an hour. Mm-hmm. And we'll kick it for the whole hour, you know what I mean? And like make sure I get the, like the best use of your time and just really flexible, just learning what you want to do. And just like this hat right here, um, the lady wanted to do cables, and I was all like, Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it right with you. So like we're gonna pick a pattern together. Like this is all off camera, right? We uh pick mm-hmm. a pattern together and we go right through it. If you got questions, go ahead and do it. So by the time we get here, you'll be at a certain place, I'll be at the exact same place you at, wherever you're stuck. And then we'll be able to go. It's just like going to tutoring, right? You don't go to tutoring mm-hmm. without your books. You don't go to tutoring mm-hmm. without your pencils and your pens and your whiteboard markers or whatever. We ready to go. We're going to get it in because we have to make the best use of your time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because time is money. We got to be efficient. <clears throat> so um, I definitely do that because um, most people who are on these platforms learning how to try to learn how to do it, they're having a hard time reading it. Reading yeah. is, is, is hard if you don't really know how to visualize what you're seeing. So I, I work with a lot of visual people, almost all visual people. Once they have a concept, then they're able to read it through and they can ask questions and this and that. But the initial has to be seen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. No, no, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, actually pretty interesting because I, I can see exactly where people get confused, right? They're like, what does this mean? Like, I don't even know how to do this. Like, you know? So, and you were talking about over, mm-hmm. under, drop right. it. I'm like, hold on, wait up. <laughs> You should get into a, a song right there, right? <laughs> now, uh, but um, no, it just, I, where can where can people find you? Where where can people find you? What's the best place? I, I know you said Instagram a few times, so you wanna um, if someone was to so we got off this video. Where where can someone find you at? Like where? Oh, for sure. Learn the I got you. I try to keep everything pretty uh, streamlined. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> if anybody hears willy nilly nits with the I E and not the Y, you you gonna find me some kind of way. So I'm willy nilly nits on YouTube. I'm Willy Nilly Knits on uh, Instagram, at Willy Nilly Knits, all uh, one word. On Facebook, since they over there playing with me, I couldn't change that to Willy Nilly Knits yet. So I just keep the old one that I have, Black Sheet Crafts. So I'm mm-hmm. on that. Uh, you can just look up Willie Smith and you'll be able to see, like, um, the logo um, on my profile page or something with my, my merch on there or something like that. But um, those are the places that you can find me. Um, my email is uh, Willy Nilly Knits. <laughs> Willy Nilly Knits mm-hmm. at gmail.com. So, um it's W and K all day, baby. We we just out here doing it the willy nilly way. So yeah, that's me. Okay. All right, no man, I uh, really appreciate that. I know that um, if so, people like if you're struggling and you want to get on the video, Willie, he's a he's a good guy. He's a he's not no bad human being. He's a he's an awesome guy, down to earth, good heart, <laughs> all love, right? Same. And um, twenty you said twenty five bucks for the hour. I will actually down below in the description. I'll put everything about Willie. Um, I'll even probably put his high school uh, senior year picture up there if he if he sends it over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, but, <laughs> I think. nah, nah, nah. But uh, yeah, guys. So um, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you uh, getting on for the people, Willie. Um, any last minute things to say at all? You good? Oh, oh, for sure. Like, I definitely want to just like, you know, I do appreciate you giving me the floor in this platform to like to speak because, you know, I can speak all day. But um, to like RJ, your audience, like all the people who are like looking to make it these um, people who are like entrepreneurs and like wanting to uh, get out there with the merch and everything like that. My biggest uh, thing that I want to impart on you is like, don't be afraid to be out there because mm-hmm. the people who are usually out there, you can name them all over the place. They're usually the highest paid. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're doing this all for what money can afford you. You know what I mean? So that's going to cost something. That may cost mm-hmm. your pride. That may cost you your 
your your humility. You might have to be humbled mm-hmm. a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. that's where you're going to grow. So yeah. definitely put yourself out there, meet people, be courageous, and uh, let's make some stuff happen. We're the next ones up. Yeah, okay. All right, man. <clears throat> I appreciate you coming on. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, everyone have a awesome day, night. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, happy Turkey Day. Be safe out there, y'all. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>